On this Sunday, February 4th, the Church proclaims the Gospel according to Mark. I would like to start with a question. Do we know Jesus? Do we really know Him? If we want to know Him, here we have one day in the life of Jesus. And we can see how it begins and how it ends. First of all, He began in the synagogue preaching, and then He moves from the synagogue in Capernaum to the house of Peter. And we hear of Simon's Peter, uh, mother-in-law. She was sick with fever, a serious fever. Jesus approaches her and heals her from the fever by touching and calling her to stand up. Then in the evening, people bring him those who are sick, those who are suffering from spiritual diseases and sometimes from all kinds of problems. And when they come in touch with the Lord, they find that they are healed. They find hope. They find uh, peace in their hearts and the joy of meeting the love of God. Perhaps for the first time, Jesus brings them hope and healing. The end of the day, in the morning, very early, the Gospel says that Jesus got up and went to pray when it was still dark. We may ask ourselves, did Jesus need to pray? He was the Son of God. The answer is, he really needed to pray. He prepared himself for his ministry. He focused on his mission so that he would be faithful to the will of the Father. The challenges were many. There were people observing him, criticizing, judging, and he had to continue faithfully in his ministry. Jesus prayed and prayed a lot before doing his work and doing his mission. We can ask ourselves, do we pray? I ask myself, and the answer is, personally, I don't pray nearly enough as Jesus did. I do pray, but there is so much more that I can do to deepen my prayer, my sense of openness to God's will in order to be more faithful, more generous with my time, more patient with people. Without prayer, we can all lose our sensitivity, lose our focus, and sometimes we get caught up with the many chores of life. We get confused, we get frustrated, and we sometimes become angry. Sometimes we are not even able to say, I'm sorry. People wanted to hold him in wherever he went, but he said, I have to move on and go because there are others who need to hear this message. It is a message of love and mercy. It is a message of salvation. Now we can ask ourselves, our world, our society, are we still listening to the message of Jesus? Do we need that message? Or do we think that we can pretty much take care of things on our own? Do we see that through the church, Jesus continues in his mission to touch our lives? I believe that it is so important, relevant and urgent. And so we are invited to continue to be open to the message of the Lord. He comes to us not shouting, not judging, but to listen, to cure our diseases, to help us and be whole as human beings. When we are whole, then our society is much better. And then we prepare what we call the kingdom of God that begins here on earth but will be fulfilled at the end of time beyond our present life.